Hey everybody, um, sure, I'm trying to think of a special sighting that stands out to me. Um, there's quite a few that uh, pop into my mind, but there's one in particular that I really want to share with you, just because um, it was a sighting that had always been on my bucket list, um, so something I've always wanted to see, and when it actually happened, it left me with tears in my eyes and completely speechless. Um, so it starts like this. So one morning, myself and my guest headed into the south um, east of Londolozi property. So it was while I was still a full time guide. <clears throat> and we went in search of a leopard. Now, the southeastern section of Londolozi was uh, very well known for its uh, leopard activity, especially due just or due just to the, the dense vegetation and the drainage lines that ran through the area. Um, it wasn't long until we found tracks for a male leopard um, and we started tracking and following one of my colleagues Simon helped us um, and we were tracking 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 um, and we were getting fairly close to the boundary with Mala Mala which obviously we couldn't cross um, and my colleague was just a bit ahead of me he managed to find this male leopard while he was still on the move um, he was heading straight towards the boundary I was a fair distance off so try to get there as quickly as possible as I came into the sighting, we literally saw him walk over the road and into Mala Mala and watched his tail disappear. So it was about a 10 second sighting, obviously not ideal. Um, great that we had, you know, obviously had the chance to show the guests the whole tracking experience and um, getting off the vehicle, following tracks, looking for signs, seeing where he had scent marked, all of that to eventually seeing the animal, um, although it would have been nice to have seen him for a little bit longer. Um, so we carried on drive, driving around the southeastern section of the property when um, my same colleague Simon radioed me and, uh, about 10-15 minutes late and said Trevor I've got a female leopard um, and he called me into the sighting. So it wasn't far from where I was, I went straight in, um, beautiful female leopard, her name was Tamburti female um, and we followed her and she was moving around um, but she was moving around with quite a bit of purpose and um, we followed her and she was walking through clearing. She wasn't really trying to stay hidden. Um, the light was still absolutely beautiful. So um, she was pretty much just walking around, scanning the area, obviously for some potential food or um, potential threats of other predators, hyenas, lions, other leopards. Uh, and we followed her and she would walk up a termite mound, stop, sit, scan the area, come down. But she really seemed like she was on a mission. And um, she was uh, walking through this massive clearing towards a huge termite mound. Um, she was a couple of hundred meters away, but I said to the guests, um, we knew this termite mound because it was used as a, a hyena den for a number of months. So I said to the guests, let's go and park on the other side of the termite mound. Um, she's heading straight there. As we've seen so far during the morning, she's been going up onto the mounds and scanning the area. And this termite mound is absolutely beautiful. We will have the light behind us. She'll hopefully walk up onto the termite mound and look directly at us, which will make for a great photo photograph. Um, so high risk, high reward. We drove up ahead of her um, and we positioned ourselves and we waited and we waited. And my colleague Simon followed her, followed her, followed her. He eventually came round towards our side, so we knew that she was getting um, close to the termite mound. Said to everybody, have your cameras ready, um, pointing top of the termite mound. And just our luck, she walked around the side of the termite mound. So um, she didn't walk up on top of the mound or anything. Um, so what we had envisioned didn't quite come together. Um, but she stopped and she stood at this termite mound and she looked around and she started looking towards these burrows and myself and my colleague, we knew that she had cubs um, and myself and my colleague Simon looks at each other and it was just complete silence on the vehicles. No one said anything um, and she walked into, she almost disappeared into one of the mounds and she, you could hear her calling and chuffing trying to, uh, and this is the moment that Simon and I realized that she's keeping cubs inside this termite mound. So I whispered to my guests, just keep quiet. Um, you can hear her making the noise. Um, we know that she's got cubs. Um, so obviously she's trying to call them out. Um, so let's just sit quietly and give her time and space to do what she needs to do. Um, and she went and she almost disappeared completely eventually. And what happened is she came and she turned and she walked out the termite mound with this tiny bundle of fur 
this tiny leopard cub in her mouth. It was an absolutely incredible moment. I mean, looking at my, my, my colleague Simon, at my guests, everyone was just in absolute awe. Um, and she turned around, she started heading straight back to where, to where she had come from. So now obviously it is a sensitive sighting and um, our general rules were only one vehicle in a sighting like this. But obviously Simon and I had no idea um, that's, where she, that's where she was keeping her cubs and now that she was, now she was moving them. So, you know, we discussed it between ourselves and we were obviously going to give her a lot of space. Neither of us wanted to leave such an incredible sighting. Um, so we let her walk off a little bit. We knew where she had come from. We assumed that maybe she um, was going back there. Maybe she had already moved the first cub or maybe she was looking for a new den site. Um, so we let her move off with the cub. Obviously you, want, you don't want vehicles driving around and lots of noise. It's a very sensitive moment. She's got the cub in the mouth. She needs to be alert. She needs to know what's going on and be able to identify if there's anything um, in the vicinity that she needs to worry about. So she moved off, we did a massive loop and we went and we parked in a clearing. Um, and it was such strange behavior because you would have think you, want, you would have thought that being such a shiny, elusive animal, she would stick to the thick, the dense vegetation and you know try and hide herself as she went through, especially having this, this young cub in her mouth. And she literally walked straight through this clearing. Um, and we didn't park in her path, we, let, we gave her space um, to walk across us. We didn't want to approach her, so we would stop 100 meters away from her, it was a massive clearing and um, 100 meters away from her and we would let her do her thing, walk past, one vehicle would move at a time um, and I went very far ahead, um, I said to my guests, you know, it is such a privilege for us to be here, Simon's with her now, let's do a bigger loop, um, we know that there is another clearing so let's go do a bigger loop and stop and turn off um, and position ourselves and let her come to us. Um, and always, that's always something that I try to do is, um, especially in, in sightings like this or sensitive sightings, is you've got to let the animals um, be free enough to hear what's going on around them, but also give them the choice to either come to you or move around you, not the other way around, because then you start to put pressure on the animal. And we were parked just off the road and where she had walked earlier was maybe 30, 40 meters to our right hand side. Um, so I thought, you know, she's going to walk on the same game path we had parked just off the road at a 45 degree angle waiting for her to come. Um, and she came walking on that same game path and she got, I must say, 30 meters away from us and she turned and she just came walking straight towards us along the road. Um, and I picked up my camera, shaking, took one or two photographs, tears rolling down my face. <laughs> And I just said to the guests, keep quiet, don't make any sudden movements, just let her walk past. We sat there and she walked with this cub right next to the vehicle, right next to us and past us. And I turned around to the guests and I, I said, you know, it doesn't get more special than that. I put my sunglasses on to try and hide the tears. Um, and yeah, I turned and said to the guests, you know, how incredible was that? And two out of the guests had tears in their eyes, I had tears in my eyes. Um, and I said to the guest, we're just going to sit here for two minutes, we're going to let her move on um, and then we're going to just do one more loop and see, um, because where, where my colleague had found her was um, an area that we knew that she had kept cubs before. So we just wanted to make sure for, for everybody else, obviously the other guides in that later on that day or the following days, um, where exactly she is keeping the youngsters. So we watched her from a distance um, and we saw her go into um, the side of uh, one of the dry riverbeds. Um, she obviously stashed the cub in there and then she lay on top of the embankment. Um, and I turned around to my guests and I said, right guys, we're gonna leave her be. Um, we've obviously had such an incredible moment with her um, and let's just give her time to settle and relax and enjoy her time with her two cubs. Um, and then we decided to head back to the lodge and just such a phenomenal sighting um, such a special memory and yeah, I just feel very fortunate to have had the opportunity to see it and to share that with my guests. Um, so yeah, that's one of my favorite sightings that I've ever had um, and it gives me, well, it's given me memories that I'm going to cherish for a very long time to come. Anyways, that's it from me. I hope that you enjoyed the story and I'll catch up with you all very, very soon.